<laughs> Welcome everybody to the Collegiate Star League. We are here with week number three of league play. I'm Squid, joined now by Meet and Greek, and uh, hopefully you're able to catch some of that uh, awesome stuff yesterday. But we got more awesome stuff for you today. Wait, man, there's been a lot of collegiate stuff going on this spring. We're glad to see it. A little bit of the off season for the CRL. The CSL is live right now, and we've got some nice surprising on the line, way down the line. But we are here, like I said, mm -hmm. week three. We're going to have a nice match for you. Shawnee State versus Missouri State. Or, yeah, I think that's right, if I remember yeah. that correctly. So, yeah, Shawnee State versus Missouri State. This is going to be a very good matchup here. Now, folks, just remembered, we're going to recap a little bit. The general format for CSL is that we have a conference round robin play, and that seeds onto a playoff bracket. So this is only week three. So still... A, like it's not a crunch time yet for these teams, but every match okay. counts. Right, and we are looking forward to getting into this one. And of course, uh, we have we have a nice uh, dedicated broadcast this time. We got live matches. This is this is a first for oh, me, yeah. I know personally. <laughs> so that's gonna be very nice. We had Paul and Benny S on last time for the live match, the first live broadcast. Unfortunately, we were unable to make it. We had other obligations, but thankfully we got those two wonderful people to get on here. And we are able to do exactly that. Yeah, I, I know. We, we know both of them from personal experience. Benny S, of course, works here at the CSL. Mm -hmm. and he, he's a great guy. And then Paul, God tier memer. If you don't know the man, please, <laughs> please go give him a shout out because he is truly awesome. Uh, for these two teams, though, we actually tried to do a little bit of digging. I actually didn't find too much uh, as to their uh, histories, which is a little bit uh, strange because usually we see a lot of teams that participate in multiple events. But we haven't really found too, too much. This is going to be a little bit of a new match for us. Yeah, it is, but we're going to get right into this one. This is a best of five. Let's get into five minutes on the clock. SSU in the blue, MSU in the orange. Let's take this one away. The first live match that we get to see. And oh boy, it's going to start. Oh boy, this might start off exciting part. We're going to look for a double tap off the back wall. Not going to be able to find it, but I guess that's one way to open up the match. Looking for that backboard. Did find purchase. Just could not read the second touch. No Shawnee. The defensive half going to be taken out. Paro once again, Steph. Can't make that one in time to score in that with the ball downfield into the orange corner. About 30 seconds to pass. Their first offense is good read here from Scratch. Sends it down to the left hand corner. Very nice play. And they take the lead. And I'm loving this energy that we're getting on so early by Sha both Shawnee State and Missouri State. But a scratch coming through. Backboard defense lacking there. However, it's just the first 25 seconds of this match. Let these teams settle in a little bit. Let's get some good rocket lead. Very good spot to select, putting that one on the corner and down. Gave them a significant advantage right there, but Missouri State not to be left out. They're going to start off an offense right here. Double oh. miss right there on the backboard. Shandy has a nice, easy open net. They'll take that trade. And I'm looking at the defensive rotation coming here from Shawnee State, and it looks like both Monster and Dysphoria were just stuck in their same corner. No one back post able to lock up and hit that one away. So we have a tied game early, Squid, and these teams are trading. Not even 40 seconds gone now we have that mark. We already got a tied game at one. Shawnee State gonna try to push up fields here. Power easily shut that one down, looking to the corner. Might find a little bit of purchase here. Dysphoria gonna try and drive this one to the midfield line. Has a teammate to work with. Monster not able to make it there, though. We're gonna be seeing a little bit of continued offense here from Missouri. Not quite a shot on, but that's gonna be the first one right there off this offensive run. is gonna be able to clear that one back to the midfield line. Power's going to inherit. And find Shandy. Makes the connection. Can't make that play, though. Oh. The first is step on that one a little bit wide of the net, but you can really tell that the communication is pretty good on their side. You can tell they've been working for a while, but that's going to be a oh, man. <laughs> off the post and away. Monster's going to find Purchase left side of the net, just inside of where the defender was coming in from the side. Oh, this is so unfortunate. Steph whiffs, and so does Shandy. Finds himself in the back of the net. All Monster had to do was drive up there and tap that one in. Unfortunate defensive errors. Now Shawnee State retakes the lead. And MSU did have some pretty good offensive plays there on the other side of the field. You could see the uh, the passing was coming out there, so good to see, as always. But the fact remains that they do uh, now we are sorry trail by one. Johnny State going to be opening up, looking for a bit of offense right here, bit of a miss there from Monster has to play this one into his own backfield with Paro finding Shandy. Good shot there, Fresh can make the save. Wow. Again, I was I was pointing out that their passes look pretty good, and uh, I I stick by that state. Oh, absolutely. The team communication is there. And check out this angle by Shandy. Scratch can't do anything about that one, no matter how fast to react. That thing's going right in. Tied game is the Bears score a go-ahead goal here. And we still have a lot of this game left, Andrew. I mean, 
Three minutes on the clock. I feel like we're going to see a lot of goals scored this game. It does feel that way. I can see Scratch out there rocking that watermelon car. Very nice. Trendy. It's in the latest designer car. Watermelon oh, yeah. all over it. Here's Steph going to get this one all the way into the blue corner. Paro's looking for a bit of a center right here, trying to make it more playable for his teammate. Steph, 50 50, goes a little bit out of favor. Shady's going to be able to try and play this one into the zone a little bit. And the bumps coming out as well, but they just can't seem to get that one in towards center as it moves down the other way. Monster, no contact made there. Steph's going to have to just drive this one away from his side, allow his teammates a moment to reset before the offense comes on. Shandy has to drop this one down. That's very dangerous. Scratch to the right side of the net. Can't find it. Monster gets 50 50 away as well. Bit of an interesting choice. Lots of faith in his teammates to be able to clear that ball away. Now looking down the other side, Steph actually finds a gap between the defender and the post and puts it through. Hey, do you see an opportunity to take a shot on the net? Throw it right there. Excellent job by Steph. Recognizing the scratch going in for that back post rotation that would leave that corner just wide enough. And with that kind of placement, you're going to be able to score that one. Half the game left now. And you're right, Squid. We see a lot of trust within these teammates here as that kickoff almost goes off that back post could have had a really dangerous bounce there now that msu got real lucky that didn't turn into anything bad as shandy's gonna attempt to throw this one downfield i guarantee you this this uh, msu acronym is going to confuse me because when i met them when i met them in ranked i was like wait you're not the michigan state team <laughs> they are not they're the missouri state team uh, that's gonna get me one of these times but they do find themselves in the defense here in a rather even game in terms of possession, we've seen seen plenty of the orange half. We've seen plenty of the blue half. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to see more. SSU, they do have two assists on both of their goals. But I feel like a ball. Let's see if that changes up. As they continue on the offense here, Shandy got to take this one out of the corner. For to return. Jeff to do likewise. Monster going to shut that one down. Find Scratch looking for the corner. Is anybody available in the zone? No, Shandy with a miss. This for you was not reading that one, though. Going for some sort of dunk play to try and keep it going, but that might actually play against them. We pass the 92nd mark. MSU is going to push out onto the blue half. And Squid, you're talking about goal participation. Well, both teams have 100% right now on both their nets. As that ball is very potential to have a lot of damage. However, the Bears are fighting to keep this one away from the center of the field. And it looks like they might be able to clear this to the blue half. With a minute and five to go, they want to hold on to this lead. Monster, looking for something on the backboard. Does a little bit of a double commit there. That could prove dangerous. Steph's going to be the first one to the ball, though. And if you're Shawnee, you want to be pushing that one as hard as you can. They will maintain possession here in the offensive end. That's very dangerous in front of the net. Scratch can't make contacts. Monster's going to keep this one competitive as it drops down to the top of the box. Steph going for a little bit of a flip reset to keep it in their possession. Does work out Shandy now. Trying to find even more space, potentially even another goal to secure this game. Don't want to commit two people onto the defense. Steph with a nice defensive midfield. This one's going to stay in the zone. Still no potential uh -oh. shot, but a bit of a double commit right there. Monster does make a touch. Paro to the back wall. This could be very dangerous. Shandy for the shot and scratch. Clears it away. Plus save and potentially a transition downfield. Send it into the midfield. No, Steph is going to be there just in time to get it away. And Missouri State manages to keep this one on the blue end of the field. This could be the potential last offense of the entire game for Shawnee State. It gets shut down so fast. Shandy going to try and keep this one away from scratch, forcing that one to drop into the corner the final seconds on the board no contact made there monster can't find purchase on this ball and it's desperate but they cannot keep it up missouri state with a one goal win right there and a lot of tenacity coming out from yeah. shawnee state you could tell they were like they were like we got to do something we got to do something and they were trying to execute but a very good shutdown yeah and I, honestly this was a very very close game i think both teams are pretty even in terms of just their technical ability so we're gonna have to see how shawnee state can react in the next game but Andrew just looking at how the game played out I think Missouri did a fantastic job of just being able to clear that ball to those teammates you're talking about those passing plays and they did come out from Missouri so let's see if Shawnee State can start to bring it back get those offenses possessions together and really build up that pressure because we saw a lot of balls in front of that Missouri net let's see if they can score those yeah, and another thing I want to point out is that their defense could use just a little bit of work. We saw a couple of balls that went in that may maybe shouldn't have gone in due to a couple of defensive rotational errors or just communication issues. Rather easy to remedy, and I hope that they are able to do so to move into game number two. Missouri State looking to move on to match point with a win here. Shawnee State going to be looking to tie it up. Plenty of opportunity to do exactly that. A one-goal game last time around. There could be just about any outcome here. 
but it will start out in the blue half of the field. Pyro gonna be a bit awkward right here, looking for a back pass. We'll only find monsters. Shandy very quick on that ball, though. We'll send it into the blue corner. Looking for a follow. Nobody able to play this one. It'll be Steph has to play it a little bit slow, looking for a center. Once again, nobody available, but that could prove very dangerous. Pyro has an uh -oh. opening that to work with a nice oh. bump in the air. Very well played by Steph, taking the defender out of the play in the air by using the back of the net. 500 IQ. Yeah, I'm loving this play here from Missouri, really taking advantage of all of that pressure. Shawnee couldn't get that ball cleared enough in time. And right now we have an early lead for Missouri. Let's see if they can do anything about that and maybe keep it as that ball was very dangerous. Scratch almost just brought that all the way downtown. And I think that would have actually been in so very nicely red, unfortunately blocked out. Missouri State going to open up on the offense once again. Monster's not able to continue with that one. Paro's going to try and get this one past a little bit slow. Scoring out of the play. Scratch going to take over. No boost in the tank. Looking to set up shop with Monster. Is able to get a nice pinch right there. Moves to downfield. Still no boost, but can they continue down the field? Paro, the 1v1 play. The 50 50 is going to go into his own corner. Scratch now out the center. This is very dangerous in front of the net. Paro actually hits it back into his teammate. That was Shandy down in the net. And they managed it to get it away. This is ridiculous. Missouri State are able to play off of each other so well, even in front of their own goal line, where it's so dangerous. Yeah, in Shawnee State, you have so many opportunities in front of that net. They have to send someone to throw it in because those are just tap-ins at that point. As Scratch did so much work to center that ball, but no one was there as this ball almost goes in from Paro. If you're just for it, that was a lot of faith in the post, but it was a good call. So nicely done there, not jumping on that. Was Scratch not with the net again off the dunk? No such luck. Oh, that was actually going to squeeze its way through. Monster with the 50-50. I'm, I think I'm going to have to call that one on luck. I think he was just trying to take possession, but, you know, it, it, we take those. No, he was definitely trying to hit that one center, probably for scratch. Instead, it careens into the net. Shawnee tied the game up, and that's going to be big for Momento. Still want to see a couple more passing plays on the offensive end from the Shawnee State, but I guess if you're going to score that way, well, there, there you go. It works as we pass the three-minute mark. It will be trying again here on the offense, right off of face off. Monster's gonna miss out on that one though. A lot of power move downfield. Half the tank left and an option in the midfield. Uh -oh, no uh -oh, going for that uh -oh. demo. Very nice play from Paro. Is this gonna take the defender out of the play? What more can you say about it? And I saw this coming from Dysphoria and elected to go for the boost and opened him up for that demolition by Paro. Steph was there to play support. That ball is in every time. So when it's 50 now, Missouri with the lead. By one. This four going to take revenge on one of their players. Not not the right one, I guess. But taking step out of the play very early on. Trying to set up a midfield pass there. Paro will be there to interfere. Spore out of his own corner. Past one. Steph is going to send this one back into the top of the box. Paro looking for some sort of redirect. That one looked like it was a little bit close. I'm not sure if he would have the angle on that. But, I mean, you, you still got to try and make those plays. Now this four upfield. Johnny State might have an opportunity right here. Going for the demo and Steph just barely misses out. Scratch is going to be able to take that one away. And honestly... In terms of midfield and uh, upfield possession, I think Scratch has been the player to watch for because he just seems to get the ball away from the opponents every single time. Right there is a good example. Yeah, and the big bump on Paro, but again, no one was there to support. If we can see Scratch get together with one of his teammates here and create some combination plays, I think that SSU could be very deadly. Two minutes now on the clock. Missouri State rather comfortable in their defensive end as they try to push it to the midfield line here. Monster's going to recenter. Be nice and easy for Paro looking for Shandy downfield. Makes the connection, but this warrior is there for the 50 50 away. Could be an opportunity here. No, Telltale miss from scratch. Shandy's going for a bump. Does get it on Monster. Nobody's there to follow it up, though. And Monster did get a piece. Very well played by Monster. Making sure that you make that team play get a touch on the ball any way that you can, regardless of where it's going. There's a roll through situation there. They didn't follow it. A huge miss right there in the net. I believe that was Dysphoria just barely missing out on contact. Looked like he wanted to send that one a little bit downfield to set it up for his teammate, but no luck. Yeah, it's unfortunate there. You can actually see him rotate out of that front post position and then immediately gets taken advantage of. Unfortunate mistake there on defensive end. Now SSU down by two goals. Still plenty of time left, but minute 25. I think they still have a great opportunity here, but they got to make sure they can hit those as Paro sees the whiff and takes advantage. And this is one of the things that I highlighted at the end of game number one is just simple defensive mistakes that you can really easily remedy if you're uh, Shawnee State. That is, uh, I, I think, a prime example of what I was referencing. Just where 
with the miss there. It's a rather unfortunate. Happens. Unfortunately, it, it happened in a, in a very bad spot here as it puts them down into a very a very dark place, I suppose, with 75 seconds on the clock. Uh, with a three-goal deficit against a team that was able to beat you out by one. They've scored three goals so far this series. They're going to have to score three more if they want to push this one to overtime in a minute. Very tall order indeed as Missouri State continues on their offense. Monster did get a nice demo there earlier on. Steph now has to drive all across the goal line. Is able to do exactly that. Shandy. Try and get it out. Scratch with a nice takeover once again. Paro's going to win out in that 50-50. It will be down into center. Shandy trying to get this one away. Monster's going to keep it alive in the zone. Potential comeback opportunity if they can score right here. Scratch off the back wall. Can anybody get a touch on it? It's going to be Steph coming out. Now this for you. No power. Falls straight to Paro. They return it to the midfield line. And it looks like that's a loss of possession if you're uh, SSU. 30 on the clock. Steph off the back wall. This for you can't make the reach. And he's going to put that one through. Good finish in Missouri State. They're going to be uh, closing out this game here, I think, fairly solidly. And uh, their defense has been incredibly strong, I think. And I, I want to say again, if we see more aggressive passing plays out of Shawnee State, I think there's plenty more opportunity. But they just can't seem to get the ball to each other. Yeah, and I think if you're Shawnee State, you got to take it slow. You, they're playing a little too quick, in my opinion. They're playing a little shaken up as this ball, again, don't rush things. You still, you still got next game. You can get the reverse sweep going, and that's totally fine. But don't panic, or else that's going to be your biggest, biggest enemy in this series. The final 10 tick down. Missouri State did manage to keep possession there for some time. Trying to drop this one in front of their own net. They're just trying to kill the ball at this point. Scratch might get a freebie, and he does. There you go. Yeah, off the left hand post. Hopefully, you can use that for a little bit of momentum. But I mean, at the same time, if you're MSU, not necessarily too worried about the uh, outcome of this situation with zero seconds on the clock. So a nice three goal win here. After a one goal win in game number one, they move on to match point uh, relatively solidly. Yeah, I think if you're Missouri State right now, don't change how you're playing. I think you're playing fantastic. If you're Shawnee though, you gotta remember, apply some of that pressure that Missouri State's putting towards you because we saw a lot of demos come out and bumps and that's really big for disrupting that defensive line of the field. Another thing to deal with is got to, again, like I just said previously, take things a little bit slower. Don't try to rush plays, but when you do make those plays happen, make sure to pass up to your teammates. Don't just boot the ball to clear it. Maybe make sure it's a clear to another teammate. Set up a pass, set up some shots. You got still in this series. It's not over yet. You still have plenty of Rocket League. I think they can take it. Yeah, the first goal that they scored off the, cro off the, off the top corner. Crossbar it was very well put together, and I enjoyed watching that one, but we just haven't seen anything as effective quite yet. And another thing to note, Missouri State, their couple of demos and bumps have been incredibly effective, whereas every time that SSU seems to make a demo play, it doesn't really do much other than kind of give them an extra moment to reset. But it's a brand new game, so we'll see if the dynamic changes here. Lots of momentum in the favor of Missouri State on the orange half of the field. And they will be opening up on the blue side once again. It will be moving down to the midfield rather quickly here, though. Dysphoria over to Scratch, off the back wall. Shanny's there, Monster touches off the back again. Dysphoria's up in the air, and they clean with the goal this time around. Very nicely done. And this is big here for Shawnee State. They need this so badly for momentum, and they get it done. Excellent job from Dysphoria. I saw a couple whips here no, from last game. Maybe he wasn't really warmed up yet, but now I see them coming through in this game, and that's going to be awesome for them. Yeah, and the big mentality that you have to have is uh, what, what I mentioned earlier on, when, actually when the whip happened. Is that, you know it's in the past? You screwed up. Get over it. You, you can move on from it. You know, just don't make the same mistake in the future. He clearly took that advice to heart. Nice shot on that there. But now it's a little bit awkward in front of their own. That muscle count sports one up high. Scratch with 40 boost in the tank. Can he get that touch? Not quite. Steps going to equalize rather nicely, finding that gap on the right side. And I'm taking a look at the defense here for SSU. They did their job as well. It's just unfortunate for Scratch trying to jump up, make the play. Steph could have hit that really anywhere. So it's just a really hard position to be in, especially with that amount of pressure. But don't let that slow you down if you're Shawnee State. Still plenty of opportunities left. However, if you're Missouri State, taking a look at what just happened, you, you know that you can take this series. You're going to try to close this out here. Yeah, they've got a ton of confidence, but here's just for it for another shot. Scratch gets in the way, but it's up to Monster! And I'm not gonna call that one calculated, but you sure could argue that it was, because Monster was exactly in the right spot to make this happen. It, 
he almost did look calculated when you look at it from that angle. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I saw him rotating back to midfield. He saw the ball in the corner, a shot about to come onto the net, a center ball. He turns that thing right around, goes up for the shot, retakes the lead for Shawnee State. They're out here playing hard. Two good passes to open up, I suppose. The Shawnee State, plenty of opportunities still in this game, but three and a half are still on the clock, and if Missouri State has anything to say about it, they will. Now, Foster into the backfield, finds this for you, looking for the right side of the net. Good placement, but Shandy still close enough to make the save. Monster gonna keep this one at the midfield line. Steph to try and play this one, gets away from the scratch, but it's Dysphoria, who now has the open shot. No obstacle for boost instead. This one's off the back wall, and in center, Paro blocked out by Dysphoria. Maybe a bit of a, a deferential play, trying to get a reaction out of the opponents. Maybe get them to commit a couple of players, which honestly, I think might not be a bad idea. Missouri State, I mean, if they commit a couple of people, it might be a lot easier for you to make that passing play. Maybe their passage defense is getting shut down, but that's going to be a bit awkward off their own backboard. Scratch got put it up in the air for Dysphoria off the back wall oh, again. Man. Can Monster finish the play? Not quite. It's still in the zone. Dysphoria with 11 boost. Can't get it away from Shandy. It'll drop off on the side, and it looks like their players just don't have the boost to continue. Yeah, they do, but this ball oh, is boy. still in the orange half. Here comes Monster Kick at the tap. You saw him floating and orbiting around that ball, trying to get another touch. Throw that thing in, give his team a two-goal lead, but watch out for this ball. It's going way downtown. Pyro! Pyro can't get that shot in. Very nicely played from both sides of the ball. Shawnee State not giving up quite yet. As we pass the half, they do retain the lead. Monster's gonna drop this one down in. Huge clear there from Steph. As part of work with upfield, might be looking for center here. Dysphoria is gonna touch it away. Good interference right there, not letting the passing play come through. And honestly, that might be their game plan right now is either let the passes go through if you know that you can defend them well, or try and block them off before they reach their target. And now Steph popping it up for Faro. No connection made there, though. And uh, I really want to say, SSU might be playing around these passes because they realize the danger that they represent. They've been so effective so far. I feel like that might be their game plan because we've seen a lot of pass interference, breakups, and uh, great defense as well. And that's how you know when you see a good Rocket League team. It's a team that can adapt to your opponent's play style and not just go down without a fight. And what also, something I'm also seeing from this SSU team is a lot of confidence is Scratch. And the team passes are coming out. Monster has an opportunity. Can that one float in? No. Good high pop though. No, unfortunately, nobody was there to clean it up, but they still have possession of the offensive end. This where you go to center. They can stand a little bit out of the play right there. Scratch, no boost in the tank. Does send that one on target. Paro will try and test this one up for Shandy. Monster does force a bit of a miss right there. Paro's going to touch downfield, though. Try and give his team a moment to reset. MSU could definitely need a great pass right there. Dysphoria off the ceiling. Monster can't commit on that one. Great respect for your opponents on that play. Realizing they could desperately use the goals, but they do not want to overcommit. Very well played on Monster's part right there. They will find themselves on the defensive end right now. Shandy centering this one rather easy to clear away though it's scratch now on the wall trying to get this one a little bit of an opportunity to reset for his teammates an awkward situation there for power didn't have any passing targets just had to drop it to his four he's now looking for the backboard does not find the pass to shandy i keep wanting to call him andy a little bit but scratch <laughs> can't find that one into the center i'm really liking once again the tenacity from ssu it looks like they really closed the uh, gap between these two teams uh, where missouri state looked so much more solid before they, they really started getting their passing plays booted up. Uh, passing plays.exe clearly seems to be working for them right now. No no 404s or anything. Indeed, indeed. And hey, you have 14 seconds left. you got to play a little more careful here, but it looks like they're just going to try to keep this ball on the orange half. Nine seconds left. Let's see if MSU can bring it back and tie this one up. Is this ball still on the half? Steph's going to have an opportunity to hit it downfield, but it looks like it's just going to be out of reach. Uh, as Sonny State. They take a game in this series, and they're setting themselves up for a good game four. Good comeback and way to keep Missouri State to a uh, record low for the series. So very nicely done. They did score three goals in the first game, five goals in the second game. So now only one goal in game number three. That's, that's a little bit, it's a little bit nice. You can tell it by the shot yeah. differential. But they're doing a lot better. Nine shots for them, only four for their opponents. So Shawnee State clearly have a lot more offensive possession. Their passes look more solid. Their defensive look more solid. Uh, midfield interference, passing interference on their own half of the field, uh, clearance stoppage, I guess is one good way to say it. just just mm -hmm. maintaining the ball on the opposing half. It's all Indeed. better. They just look it like really a, a better team. I agree with you wholly there because, man, it was just a very different Missouri State team playing, and that's because Shawnee really brought it to them. Let's see if they can do it again or...
Missouri State can bring us back and close out this series. So now for Missouri State, perhaps they got a little bit relaxed in the last game. We don't really know, but now they have to realize that there's a very real threat from SSU. If they manage to win this one, they'll push it to match point. It will be a potential reverse sweep opportunity. They're going to start the defensive end once more, quickly driving down the other side. Monster's going to set this one off the back wall. Kimpar will get the read. He's going to drop down right in front of the net. Scratch oh, just off the post. Dysphoria can't get that one away from the defender as well. He'll be taken out of the play for his troubles. But a very close call. They're right off the bat. Now Monster towards the top of the net. Carl's going to get that one away. And Shandy to follow. But you can tell SSU's coming out swinging. Already yeah. three shots on. But oh that first guy can't fight to it. Carl's suppose... a beast. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that one. Oh my goodness, Paro, from making that ridiculous clutch save to bring it all the way downtown, doing so much for Missouri State. The game plan for SSU seems to not have changed, but they uh, they got a little bit aggressive there on that first attack run. Allow that one to go through now. Step potential flip reset right here does not get. The shot he's looking for. Now Monster upfield has this for you to work with. Great shot to the left side of the net. They're passing plays really starting to line up right now. Great transition downfield. Check out this jump from Dysphoria to get in front of Paro. Excellent read and hits it up for 90 in the net. Talk about confidence tying this game up. Shawnee State still in it. Oh, absolutely. They, they look like it's so much more momentous than they were in games number one and two. The ball will fall to their half. That's gonna not gonna be a good one right uh -oh. there. A bit of a mistouch, I believe, from the scratch. Not exactly what he was looking for as it sends it straight to the center of the field. Uh, yeah, oh, I think that's man, that's rough. Because Monster, Monster was right there, ready to clear that one back into the orange half. And you saw all of MSC rotating up, so that could have been a good opportunity for them. Unfortunately, it goes the other way. And hey, mistouches happen. Sometimes you just got to let it go right by. As we saw plenty of time left, just under four minutes as this four is going to collect. I feel like that may have been more of just a misread and, he, and he, he thought he could still like just kind of drop it down for his team and end up hitting his uh, nose hit box instead of his wheel. But I feel like that was really what happened right there. Because uh, Scratch, he's been playing really solid all game, all series long. Oh yeah. I feel like it may have just been one of those situations, but with a minute and a half off the clock, there's still plenty to go. MSU is going to be trying to take possession right here. Paro's going to keep this one in the zone. Who is back in the net? They might not be there for long. He went for a demo. Monster is able to get that one out of the corner though. Aggressive play there from Paro. You can tell they're still trying to go for those uh, offensive demos once in a while. And I'll down the other way. Only one man back. This is going to center this one. Shandy can't make the play. Monster for the demo. Oh, it's an the back wall as well. Unfortunately, can't get that one angle on net. But a good idea. Taking out one defender. And now another bump. Scratch can't make contact right there. But Monster. The bump, the oh, man. The bump from SSU. <laughs> they have to be. Got to get in the minds of Missouri State right now. You, oh, there like yeah. 15 bump plays happening there at the same time. Oh, yeah. No, Dysphoria bump step away from the net. Then Scratch comes in and demos Paro, opening that net wide open for them to tie that up. Well, I guess that's that's the best way to look at it. Well, I can't score. Well, I might as well just bump him. Now, Monster, oh, the double touch opportunity. No, Shady's going to get that one away. Great backboard defense, but now Scratch for the shot on. No passes to Monster. Is Deforia still playable? He is. Taps this one up high. Scratch going to challenge right here to force it down into the corner. Monster is still able to play this one. And you can tell that Shawnee State, they're really, like, in control of Missouri State right now. They're just making them do whatever they want on the defensive side of things. Very nicely done. Paro going to look for a step there on the connection. A good idea with no boost in the tank, but will not work out. And that clear is going right back down the other way. Just for you to tap it off to the side. Very uncomfortable, but he is able to get it away. Uh, there goes Scratch. I guess he's out of the play now. Steph with not enough boost to get this one past the midfield line. Monster will touch that one. Great bump. The bumps are just... Uh, they, they're pretty prominent in this game. A bit of a missed touch there. We'll send it off to the backboard, but it looks like Shawnee State in a very there awkward spot here. Paro! I was going to say it looked like they had it under control, but that double commit off the back wall maybe changed my mind. And double commits are the bane of every single team, as Paro read that play so well, playing up so far, playing real aggressive, got the free net. This is basically a repeat of game number one, except I believe Missouri State scored first. <laughs> Bit of a change up there, I suppose. And now we'll look for the bump to his dysphoria. No such luck. Paro's going to touch this one all the way to the back wall. And this is you once again on a fast retreat. Steph into the corner with an option out in the center. Looking for the back wall. Can't quite find it. Dysphoria's dunk does not go in their favor, though. And touch there from scratch. He's going to be followed by Monster. Shandy. 
Drop down for Paparo. Bit of a miss right there. Good bomb. Scratch has possession. Looking for the center. Not going to be able to get that one arced towards net or out towards Dysphoria. Could be a little bit of a breakdown right there. And uh, I mean, Scratch, for as good as he is getting it away from the opponent, his passes unfortunately don't seem to be uh, completely as impactful as the other two. He does have a spot in a lot of their plays, though. Oh, yeah, he does. But unfortunately for him, just no one was there in order to collect that pass for Scratch. Good opportunity there. Can he? No. Unfortunate circumstances, this ball's still in the blue half. We'll drop out into the orange side though. Paro gonna look for Steph for a nice easy clear. No boost in that player though. Dysphoria off the back wall finds purchase. Paro can't get this one away. Monster oh, it's man. open in front of the net. Dysphoria probably expecting that one to go away. No opportunity here. Toward the top corner. Nice save there from Shandy. Pinch off his own crossbar. Now Scratch has to play his one into his own back. He'll look at that boost in the corner. Steph's going to force to this issue, though. Nice. 50-50. Bumps the player away. A nice flick as well to try and give him a little bit of time to push this one downfield. 35 seconds are on the clock. They have to score one right now if they want to stay in this series. Good fake from Paro. Looking for that. Has Shandy to work with as well. The fake really bought them so much time. Unfortunately, the defenders didn't make use of it and rotate around. Yeah, really. Oh, my goodness, Paro. Such great card control there, able to get it past the entire defense. And that might be the nail in the coffin. There's still 30 seconds left. So, hey, anything can happen here, Squid. Let's see if Shawnee State can make a miracle as we're getting down to the 22nd mark. Good dunk there by Steph to keep this one in the blue corner. Scratch, dropping this one down. Just four, he did not want to come up on that one. That made the last chance that they have. 10 seconds now approaching. Worth the net, it's off on the right side. Can't score that one. Steph's gonna touch it off to the other side again. Monster to the back wall, but I think it's a little bit too late right now. The clock hits zero. That's going to seal their fate. A 3-1 series in favor of Missouri State. They might get a little bit of an extra here, but it will drop out on the corner. Wow. And a good fight from Johnny. <laughs> I will say, I'm not gonna lie. It was, it was well fought. We held him to a one goal game in that game number one and uh, came back in game number three and took one. Let's... Uh, I want to. I want to say, I I think that Shawnee could have taken that one. They did have a two-zero record before today, so th I think yeah. that they they probably should have taken this one. But I I feel like game three Shawnee is like the normal Shawnee, and then what we saw the rest of the games was maybe like them playing a little bit off. Because as I mentioned, the passing plays didn't seem to be there. But then in game three, it just suddenly exploded into like exactly. wow, they they seem to connect with everything. So yeah, I feel they like might it's be... just different. They might be a team that performs better under pressure, but with that, you're right. These teams are not going to be tied in league play. They're both going to be two and one. So that's going to make things very interesting as things go down to the wire in the later weeks as they're looking towards playoff contention. But that was a really good series, Squid. I think everyone yes. can appreciate that. Hey, even if Shawnee, if you're rooting for Shawnee, that was fantastic Rocket League we saw from both sides. So congrats to Missouri State for taking this series. But there's still plenty of Rocket League left in league play. We're going to be here for more weeks to come. And I believe we do have another match that we're going to be setting up. So I believe we might go to break. I believe so. And then so. we'll get confirmation on what this next match is. But this is great. We're getting more Rocket League to showcase. So you can't complain about that one. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. But you're watching Collegiate Star League. It's the Rocket League League play. We'll catch you soon.
Wait, what do you mean? Georgie leads him. Welcome. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> Anyways, yes. Well, awesome. Welcome back to the Kalei Discs League. <laughs> like we have a great there. match. We have a great <laughs> match coming up next, folks. No, this is going to be intense. We're going to see some oh, great sorry. Rocket League action. We have LSU, a dominating powerhouse team versus UNCC. This is now, this, okay. if I'm understanding Squid, this isn't UNCC's main roster. Um, I did see in the chat while we were on the break, uh, some, somebody did mention that was the UNCC D team. 
uh, somebody okay. else m mentioned later down that it was that D team is the best team. I, I don't know if that's true or not. Or right, maybe you just like getting some hype in the chat. If that if so, then good good for good on you for supporting your team. Bully for you. But I mean LSU. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, LSU. LSU. If you A don't know LSU, can... if you don't know LSU, you're you're gonna know LSU. This this oh boy. They are it's getting hot well, here. It's basically what's going on with right now with LSU. Oh boy. They, I mean they... honestly, LSU's LSU is a very interesting history and it's almost it's they they're very accomplished as a team. They just unfortunately had some sad missteps along the way, especially when I, I believe with CRL missing out on land two years in a row, even though we expected them to go through all the way. Yeah. They, in the CCA, they took the spring series last sem or last year, so it, they're a very very good team. It's just. I think they just need that one little extra push and they can really get into that prime zone. You know what I'm talking about, Squid? However, the prime zone. The prime zone. It's you know, you have your NEUs, you have your Arizona <laughs> states, you have your Cal Polys. Like okay. LSU is up there with okay. them. It's just unfortunately it's, when it comes down to like those crunch time games, they just unfortunately dropped them in the past. And I believe UNCC was a team that eliminated yeah. them from CRL contention. If we remember, if we remember in uh, CRL season one, the playoff format to decide who was going to the land was uh, it was a Tower of Doom format, I think is what it was called, right? Something like something along those yeah. lines. UNCC were uh, were one of the, they were the bottom seeded in league play, so they had to play the entire Tower of Doom. LSU was number one, but UNCC swept through the whole thing, including oh LSU in one of the final matches, and took them out. UNCC it plowed was... through the entire bracket. It was, it was like, oh boy. It blew my mind. It blew my mind. It was just like, no one expected it, but that's what no happens way. when you really just sit down. That's what happens when you sit down as a team and just play like crazy amounts of Rocket League for two weeks straight to really bring out your best. But I think with that, we have everyone in the lobby I think except our wonderful viewers. Me. Wait, wait, wait on me, dude. I need to except say for squid. <laughs> except for squid. All we right, got everyone here. in here now. I believe our viewers have waited long enough. Let's get this one going. As LSU in the blue, UNCC in the orange. Let's get right into this one. Five minutes on the clock. Best of five. And just look at LSU. Stacked team. Let's see if UNCC oh, can respond. It will be a difficult battle. We're just about any team facing off against Louisiana State. But I suppose everyone has to come to this spot eventually. LSU presently sitting at 2-0, uh, and oh, I want to say. Yes, that is correct. And UNCC, this team, is currently at 1-1. One and one. So it would be a nice little mix of if they were able to take it. But that remains to be seen. Slat's going to be on the field in place of T. Bates, I believe, is their main roster player. Donnie's going to open Ooh. the door right here. Finds the left side of the net, and they have the lead. Yeah, excellent job here from Donnie. Unfortunate for Tuan, the Swan was trying to get a backboard play. Donnie realized he was going to miss that shot, went up and put one on net of his own. Four minutes 37 are on the clock right now. LSU with a lead of one. Lotec not the touchy one off the back wall. Uh -oh. Tox is going to take the shot and punish for that one. And UNCC are going to respond in part. Only 13 seconds of real time passed. And I see UNCC. They're coming in here. We know we put so much hype on LSU. We got to realize UNCC is not a force you want to reckon with here. They're a dangerous squad. They are only half a minute gone. We are back at a tie game with one on the board for either team. Tuan looking for a flip reset there. Does not find it. Tucks is a little bit too far up. Slats got to get this one passing. Cognito Turtle as well. Looking for the center. No dice on that one. Cognito is going to drop this one off to the side. Lotec getting bodied right there by Tuan, but it's not going to stop him out. One pass, Tux. Nice defense there, though. Looking for passing the center. Cognito, awkward touch right here. Tuan is going to be able to follow it up. And, you know, for the LSU being as aggressive as they are, you usually actually saw them just held by just what seemed to be barely anything, but Lotec's going to find a nice <laughs> shot there. And for UNCC, this is a bit of an interesting play at all. Incognito Turtle not making contact. Tux not making contact. Uh, it was Slad just, Slad just brought that all the way downtown, dribbling it, finding low tech right there. Excellent pass to get it 
by the last defender. LSU retaking the lead. And right now, they're starting to apply more pressure. Is Donnie trying to get something off the kickoff instead? He's going to have to force that one away as Incognito Turtle playing some good defense. And you and CC on the blue half of the field. Turk's going to be able to manage it there. We'll take over top of one. Juan the Swan is able to get it right past. Incognito is still playable on this one. For his center, no luck on that. Donnie will touch it off. 50-50 from the slant. Goes just barely in their favor as Donnie picks it up. Looking for a second touch, perhaps. Maybe onto the back wall. No, that's going to be a bit awkward. Bit of a double commit right there. Tux will be able to touch it off to the side. Now moving downfield. Blocked out by low tech at the midfield line. Looking for a shot. It will be Twan. Clears that one away nice and easy. But uh, slowly, slowly and a bit increasingly, uh, I guess, is the, is the pace right now for LSU. They just creep closer and closer to the opposing goal line. But honestly, I mean, this pacing is not what we're used to seeing from them. I feel like they might be slowing down their pace of play just a little bit, trying to compensate for UNCC, who seem to be playing rather unorthodox. And as I did mention, this might be their uh, D team. But you wouldn't be able to tell by the scoreline right now. We're pushing the half, and it's still only 2-1. Yeah, I know. And actually, Squid, that is something to think about as well, because if you're a high-level team and you're playing against other high-level players, you can kind of predict what they're supposed to do. But if you're playing against um, UNCC's D team, for example, they might not be at that same level where LSU is, so you're not entirely sure where they're going to try to hit the ball, whether they're going to make contact or not. For example, right there on that play. So it does make it a little more difficult for LSU. And it is starting to slow them down as Tux had an excellent opportunity. Just couldn't find it on net. Two minutes and 10 on the clock now. Looking for a shot here is Donnie. Can't put that one on target. I have to agree with you. I feel like UNCC might just be taking LSU out of their comfort zone to a certain extent. But they do seem to have some solid mechanics so far. So I don't want to necessarily say that they're not on the same level as LSU. Well, that remains to be seen. Low tech. Pushing past the midfield line here. Nice, easy inherit there for Tuan. Gets a pass flat as well. Donnie now with an option upfield. Tux is, has to force away the demo. Actually gets a touch on that one as well. Nicely played. Now low tech for the air drag. Can he get it past the defenders? It's not quite. Turtles. And again, honestly, I don't feel like the mechanics are really that different between these two teams. I'm not certain if this is such a bad team. I, I don't... Oh, no. I never wanted to believe that they were. But... I, I feel like I feel like when when I said in the chat that this match is gonna be a good one, somebody said nah. I, I feel like they were lying to me because this seems to be a pretty good match. Nice goal line defense right there as well. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because here's the thing about it: on paper, stats may seem different, but it all comes down to how these teams show up on the pitch. As Incognito Turtle throws one towards that, here comes Donnie. He's centered. He's ready to collect the ball. Tux can't make that tap, and all Low Tech had to do was bang that one down the field. Yeah, and Tux right here, I mean, he did have a good touch on that one, but uh, thinking about it, Donnie was down in the spot where he was going to touch it, so, I mean, it's kind of a loose-loose situation. You can touch it off to the side, but Donnie's just going to throw it right back on target. This is kind of a you got to be able to have if you're on this kind of team. Very high tier, as far as the collegiate scene goes. Now, Slat going to drop that one. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. The stall from Slat. This man, this cheeky man, look at this. And now LSC is starting to come out here. That was an excellent tap, and that thing barred down into the net. Goodness, LSC waking up. It's 4-1. Even when he's making, like, what could be considered, I suppose, like a, a minor freestyle kind of play, it still goes bar down. That's just the talent of these players. Now off the back well slap. Actually going to set that one off the backboard again. Maybe, maybe want to get that one underneath the crossbar. Well, they do still have a solid lead. It knows with that whoops in the chat. I'm not certain if you can see that one on stream, but you <laughs> slap just trying, they're just trying to take this one a little bit casually right now. They do recognize their lead. Just got to keep the ball out. And a good bit of offense right there uh, from UNCC, I have to admit. They were pushing down there a, a little bit. But at the same time, LSU, we've seen the ball basically entirely on their offensive half. There's not really much more to say about this game. They dominated here in terms of possession. UNCC did a pretty good job meeting them on the defense. They're get, they got a shot or two on target once in a while, but that one... Easily defended by Donnie. I mean, these players are such, uh, such a caliber that it makes it difficult to save or That's put anything on target. Donnie, oh my goodness. Absolute slam of a shot, 66 miles an hour, and finds the corner as well without even hitting the ground. Oh, boy. And like that, if you're UNCC and you blink, all of a sudden, LSU's in the air throwing that thing into your net. And uh, something I do want to mention, this is UNCC's D team, and they're not doing a bad job. Honestly, this game, this one game got away from them. It's just one match, though. 
But I really wish we could see their A team going up against LSU because that would be a very, very close match. It could go either way, too. But right now, there's still plenty of opportunities for UNCC to come back in this one. I think they were able to slow down LSU in the first half of the game, and that was very clear. Like, yeah, it's very key to their game in order to slow down that LSU because very last minute of this game, once LSU stepped on the gas it's very hard to stop them once they get comfortable become a like a really powerful force however the rest of that entire first part of the game they're pretty good so if they can keep that up going into game two here i think they have really good opportunities ahead of them yeah i have to agree with you on that front of course their defense did hold fairly strong for that first half and they got that opening goal which did help out but LSU, like you, like you mentioned, once they got going, there was really no stopping them. They, they felt more comfortable making passing plays on the other end, uh, realizing that their opponents probably wouldn't be able to stop them. And for UNCC right now, it's going to be a very tough match. we got a fresh game on the clock right here. Two, uh, two game is the count. Two game, game two. That's, that's the one we're looking for. <laughs> game two it is as we have Welcome. five minutes on the clock. Welcome back to the league's collegiate star. That's the one. Oh, man. <laughs> Shot on that year by Slab for the follow-up. Oh, wait. Good save there. Once again, the goal line defense coming in strong for UNCC. About a half minute gone. Done. He's going to take Twan out of the air. I guess this is a no-fly zone over the midfield line. If you're on the UNCC side, I'll Slack and get that one in towards center. Lotech's going to try and play with this one. Not quite. Now, Tux moving up field has a bit of a stall possession right here. Full loose as well. Can't get that one up in the air, though. Lotex nice and easy midfield line. Slats up in the air. It's over towards the net. Nice and easy tap away by Swan. And once again, it feels like we're right back where we left off. LSU is trying to push on the offense a little bit. A little bit of counters, though, coming out from UNCC, which is a bit of a, a bit of the story that we didn't hear about last time. Yeah, and they're starting to get some good offensive possession as Incognito Turtle was looking for Tuan across the field, but couldn't get it past, I believe, low tech on the defense. So LSU, this ball's in there half quite a bit. Let's see if UNCC can capitalize. Now Donnie downfield. Oh my goodness. Low tech actually pre-jumped that one off the ceiling. Use oh my well. I guess if there's one way to, to play out of the game. Uh that you think you have an advantage on, that's one way to do it. But I suppose they should probably wait until they get a goal. UNCC have posed a legitimate threat so far in game number two. Uh, let's keep moving down. Lotech found Donnie, finds Slack. Can they get this one through? Donnie's in the air again. And Turtles are bearing himself a savior by clearing that one away. Slack into the corner once again. Tuan's going to get a little bit of a double tap right there. Moving it downfield as well, all the way to the midfield line. No boost left. Has an option in center. Maybe it's going to be tough for the Ooh. shot, and they actually put it through. UNCC, wow. they stuck with it until the very end, just thinking like, maybe, maybe, this is, maybe it'll work. You know, sometimes things happen. Lotech couldn't get the touch. Yeah, and no, Tuan did such a fantastic job. Literally brought that ball all the way downfield through every single LSU player. And got the pass necessary to hit that one to oh, touch. Low tech. Low tech. Disrespect. Oh, man. Come on, disrespect low tech. You can't do that to a guy. They just score, they had oh, it's so much confidence, and then you just do that. <laughs> low tech's bad man. Low tech and Donnie are so deadly in the air and slat is such a fantastic third to play for them for these combination plays to come out like this lsu team is so well-rounded but man like you can take any one of them and throw them in that situation they'll bang it in most likely as we now equalize of just about half the game left lsu is going to be continuing on the offense right here slat looking for a bump on incognito to nice demo dodge right there 50-50 out of Lotex favor. Donnie looking for the back wall. Can he hit the double? He's looking for it, but no boost in the tank to finish it off. Now Lotex to Donnie to slide in the center. It's a textbook passing play. One, two, three, and then the is the net. Yeah, we see a lot of pass plays from LSU. It's a big part of their play style. Get that thing centered in. Have someone crashing the box to throw it on there. It's such a fast speed. You can't do anything about that. As LSU retakes the lead. Now let's see if they do... A similar fashion to game one where they start to bring this one a little bit away as they start putting on goals or let's see if uncc can slow down lsu bring this one and tie it up i honestly think i have to go with oh my goodness never mind my prediction is uh -oh. off oh, oh, back man. In, man. 
There That's is wrong. never, there's never a good spot the field's back with all this they're doing it on purpose, and that counter attack very nicely done again. Slap is finding low tech in the midfield. No contest right there. And oh boy, it, like I said, if there's ever a spot to feel back, with that, there's never a good one unless you're doing it on purpose. But right there, definitely the worst spot. That's tough. It really is tough because you just went from potentially tying the game to all of a sudden being down two goals against this LSE squad. That's scary. Here comes Donnie. Can't get the tap. It's just millimeters out of reach. So the score line stays the same. Let's see if Lotech, though, can do anything about this as Tuan able to get a good clear gives it to incognito who gets it past uh oh watch out for donnie he's gonna throw that on net very awkward situation here for uncc you could swap between the player cams and really tell if this kind of turned into a bad situation as soon as that second touch came on the ball incognito trying to pass it out to his teammate or keep it away from the opponent you couldn't really tell either either way tux found himself with a ball just reacted to it and suddenly that pop and it, it got up really out of hand really fast they're playing rather close to each other made it turn into a very bad play very quickly now let's see with a very solid lead of what oh no <laughs> that's not what that's not how, how good it works <laughs> Here's the thing about Donnie, he will score and you just will not understand how he gets those reads because those are always 100% calculated coming from him. We see we see him do it for so long now. It's been like two years of Donnie in Collegiate Rocket League and we just can't get enough of him. Remember, we need we need like a plaque with that written written in some sort of fancy <laughs> handwriting, right? Two years of Donnie. <laughs> Make it happen, somebody. I want, if Zonic's out there, our graphics are, please make it happen. Let's. And here's another play. Oh, that was a field to Slab. Donnie for the fit. No, Slab's going to finish it off instead. I don't remember who started this passing play, but again, it's just Donnie, Slab to Slab. Donnie, Donnie, Slab. Slab. <laughs> He's doing it all the way just, down the field. That's just how good LSU is. Their communication is so on point. I really wish we can take a listen to the player cam or player comms. The player cam. Let's so take a listen, to the, play yeah. <laughs> take a listen with to the player comms. Like, I, I can I already know that'd be a bad idea. You can already <laughs> listen to the player place. cams. You use your eyes. Oh George. man! Oh man! It's good. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's, I, it's hard to do my job here without you criticizing me like hey. that. It's incognito turtle. Getting a good consolation goal here. And this and then, could be hey, big for UNCC. That's that's momentum right there. That was pretty good speed, I'm not going to lie. Getting to that ball very quickly, realizing yeah. his opportunity. A good 50-50 from Tuomas 1. I haven't seen too much possession on the offensive end from UNCC so far this game. They have had a little bit more after that first uh, opening minute, I suppose we'll say. This was going to be dangerous in front of the net. Slack kick. Oh, low tech. I can't How believe low tech. Did How did How you free jump that? that? How do you read that? I, I can't believe it. I saw him going up the wall. For this play, and I was like, "Yeah, he's not gonna be in this play at all." It's Tani scores, LSU. but then he just goes out of nowhere. Like, what is LSU? LSU just play like monkeys. Like, no, no, like no. A man in their right mind would consider going up for that. And then there's, and then the ball just gets 50 50 at some strange angle. And then there's Low Tech just like almost hitting it, <laughs> coming off the ceiling out of nowhere, like completely out of rotation. What are they thinking? It's I don't just... know what. But they're still leading by five. That's the thing. They can yeah. play like it. They still win. How does that happen? Just, LSU is just a whole nother level. I, I, I swear. It's just... I'm, it's imagine, low, again, oh, low tech. Oh, oh. Low tech. <laughs> Coming out of nowhere. And excellent job by Slat to carry that ball into the corner. And really keeping it away from Swan right there. I and think this, this is one is just running away. This is the epitome of LSU playing a, a good game because they are just on fire. Everything that they do, even even though Lotech didn't even hit that ceiling shot, it was still ridiculous how close he came to reading that accurately. And as we now have the final seconds, eight to two is the final score for game number two. Oh yeah. And uh, I I feel like, oh boy, like I said, if you if you didn't know LSU before now, then you know LSU now. They have six assists. The goal is spread oh out amongst them. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's just... 15 shots my on. Mind. LSU. This team. this team is just... This is a team to watch for the playoff contention here at CSL. Like, 
I'm not a betting man, but I would bet on LSU. No, that's just man. that's just how I feel about this team. They are just so in sync with each other, and they this they've kept the same roster now, like minus one or like third, minus third. one, like you know, like they, their third changes every now and then. But they've kept the, this roster has stuck around so long, and the duo that is Low Tech and Donnie, like man, yeah. that's been around too. Like this team yeah, is just have. like. Like, I don't even know what to say. This team, just watch them, honestly. Like, team, they make Rocket awesome. League beautiful. Yeah, well, why, 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 why two years of Donnie? Why not two years of Low Tech? Why not two years flat? Why, why don't we just have them all? Two years, two years of LSUA is really what we're looking for right here. Then here's Slats to open oh, things man. up. Speak of the devil, right there. And uh, four minutes and 48 are on the clock, and he is going to go in right now. You know LSU is so comfortable that they're just going to play close on every single ball. And at this point, if you're UNCC, you need nothing short of a miracle of, to get this game back because they're going to, you know, they're going to play out of their mind fast and, and just do whatever they really feel is necessary. And when, they, when they're having fun playing the game, it's a bad sign. Yeah, and you know, LSU is scary. You know what's scarier than LSU? Comfortable LSU when they're <laughs> just playing so casually and like. Oh my goodness. Like when you give them that much space, they make it tough. I swear they do. As Incognito Turtle now might have opportunity here. Tuan the Swan is center, but Slat actually gets the miss. If Tuan stuck with that ball, that could have been an opportunity they're looking for. Instead, they played more conservatively, but this one might bite them in the end. As this ball's still dangerous. I mean, can you really blame them for playing conservatively against LSU the way they played in game? Uh, I'm not certain if I really blame them for that one, but I do agree aggression could have benefited them right there but i mean it's not like lsu to make those kinds of misplays so at the same time that i really think aggression could have helped it could have also very well hurt them and i don't uh critique them for what they what they chose to do in that spot well the fact of the matter is un understandable understandable have a nice day is that so <laughs> no we're going for this time around oh man uncc walked on their own half for a little bit there they did finally push it up but like, here's a shot, shot on shot and there you go. It's good. Take a look at the speed on this one. We're talking 73 miles per hour from way downtown. It's another combo play. Donnie to low tech. Combo play. I, that, I just no, imagine it looks like up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, DA <laughs> select start. Dude, if you look at these guys, guys infinite if you look goals. At their controllers, if you see their button inputs right now, it would probably res resemble some sort of fighting game. Just how. <laughs> into this game they are no seriously like they're doing so much on the field right now it's incognito turtle twan the swan can he beat on donnie no this could be dangerous because donnie like was in a prime position and maybe get a second tap on that and elected to stay on the wall lsu ahead by two off the backboard low tech <laughs> I can barely get time to shift into my calls before they score. I mean, that's how that's how fast they are sometimes. Is, again, finding that backboard, and we talk so much about backboard defense being of utter uh, utmost importance. I think is is it's like the number one thing you have to be able to defend when you're playing against a team like a uh, UIUC against uh, LSU, NEU, Cal Poly, and Arizona. You don't have that Arizona State, right? Okay, look, Arizona I don't State. recognize those guys. Look, they got they got fire on that team. <laughs> that made us. Savage for me, all right. I can't handle talking about Arizona State. He's oh, gonna no, go. He's it's gonna not just fire, right? not just fire on that team. You got planted cargo on that. You gotta cargo, remember, plenty, <laughs> dude. Planting cargo is my boy. I mean, that's the thing you gotta realize. Fire, fire is just gonna, He's gonna roast me if I say anything about ASU. All right, so I'm not. I'm not. I'm not dealing. <laughs> I ain't dealing with it. That man's a savage. We love. We love the passion that all these collegiate players have towards their teams, the collegiate Rocket League in general. As half the game left, UNCC. They held has LSU to, to find three. Something. Yeah. I, I suppose that's a little bit of achievement, but here might come another one. Donnie's going to send that one towards the top of the net. Twan is able to that one away, though. Nicely done. But uh, again, their defense has actually been relatively strong in terms of uh, being able to keep LSU out. Game two was a, a little bit of a, uh, of a dark spot, I suppose, is the way to put that one. But um, uh, their offense really just has not been enough. Not to say that they've had a, a lack of offense, which I, I mean, I suppose they, they lack of some offense to a certain extent. But we've seen, we saw UIUC take down LSU once before by barely even playing any offense. It's just that LSU, once again, they're just playing so much in the zone that they don't care about your shot on net. 
They they literally do not care about anything that you put towards them. They are going to clear it away with relative ease. Throw it to one of their teammates. Throw it to their other teammate. Throw it to the backboard and double tap it in with a flip reset to on the side. So I mean, it's just the way they're playing right now. If you're UNCC, yeah. well, oh boy. What, here's the, here's what the things for, here's away, things for it. What can I take away from this? Well, look at just the shot differential. Not that much different. LSU has five shots on net. They converted to three. UNCC has three. It, not. It's not in terms of like who has the most offense. It's just LSU is just so much more deadly with their possessions. They're much more consistent, I would say. And that's what really stands them out here in this series. Yeah, I don't think there's really too much more hope here for UNCC as the one minute buzzer sounds. They still have yet to score uh, many goals in this series, let alone this game. 50 seconds now on the clock. They scored they some goals the in this series. Come on. I said, I said many. I, they haven't scored many. Oh, okay. Goals I thought you said, okay, okay. I misheard. Come on. This <laughs> might be toxic yeah. for a second. Well, I mean, I am toxic, I, but not. Yeah, not I, thought, I thought Crescent was going to fire you for a second. As Donnie, tempted to take this one out. Field. And again, like just not that aggressive play coming in from UNCC and it leads to an LSU goal. Well, I mean, can you blame them though? I mean, if you play aggressive as UNCC right now, it get what you're looking for then suddenly bam that's a goal against like, like unconditional lsu scores because it doesn't seem it to matter where they put the ball they could shoot the ball at the ground and still score i mean that's just basically how it works with your lsu right now they, they can shoot from just about anywhere on the field i'm, I'm gonna have to cite a low tech shot in the air from the corner didn't really look like there was much of a shot angle and the defenders didn't think so either but then low tech came in and said you know i can hit that it's, it's no big deal if i can hit that every day of the oh, week and man. donnie's gonna get another one they're just patting the stats at this point. 11 seconds are left on the clock. I mean, how many goals have they scored so far this series? I, I don't remember oh, the score yeah. on being number one. I, believe... I think this, I think second game was eight goals. I believe third, first second game was, was eight like goals. Three? Three, three or four? I, I, I want to agree. It was like three or four. So I, that puts them in the, in the range over of 13. 13? Yeah. Or sorry, not, not 13. 15 to 17 goals, I think, what the range we're looking at. Man. Somewhere around there. But UNCC, they're going to get one right here. Hey. They didn't get shut out. Not shut out. There you go. Achievement get. <laughs> Not shut there up. There we go. Not shut up by LSC. Hey, there are a lot of teams that can't, that, that can't do that. They have. I mean, <laughs> Yo, that's a, that's a fair point. That's a fair point, Andrew. I agree with you on that. But unfortunately, it looks like UNCC, they're going to be dropping to a 1 and 2. LSU will be 3 and 0. Oh. Right, yeah, so, LSU, LSU great job. Great Pretty job for a great time. start for their season. I mean, again, what more did we expect out of LSU? Dominant team. And uh, honestly, if this had been the UNCC A team, we were, we were so excited to see that when we realized this was the UNCC D team, I mean, our expectations kind of dropped. But at the same time, for, for the D team, they did incredibly well uh, holding LSU. Like I mentioned, the first half of every game seemed to be very solid on the defensive side. They had possession as well, and they didn't get shut out in a single game. So that that's a good takeaway. you got to take that and move it forward. I mean, you got a one and two record. But take that one win. I mean, you win next week, you tie up your record, and then there you go. You're back in it. No, you're right. And honestly, this, this game's a good learning experience for UNCC because they can see what they did wrong. And it's always great to play uh, higher caliber teams because even if, even if you do lose, you end up learning a lot about your own play style and things that you can adjust. And well, some things in particular for UNCC include like getting more passing plays, so working on make sure you get back on defense, playing off that backboard. That was really big for them. We saw a lot of shots coming down from the ceiling from LSU. If you just work on some things here and there, and like you don't have to go super fast. You can take things a little slow as well. Just improve on like one thing every week, and by the end of the season, you're a much better team. So things can turn around. And again, you see this may be. This may be their D team, but we've seen their A team in the past go from that 0-7 league play record in CRL to, oh, land. to, so, to land. Yeah, so hey, but, any team can improve. Yeah. That's just that's, that's my opinion. Correct. Any team can Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that one. But if I recall correctly, I don't think anyone actually had a land. So I, I think I misspoke there. Uh, but they made it to the finals. Oh, that's the, that's they made it to the nationals. Right. So they made it to the nationals. But that's going to close it out for this series. Once again, LSU taking this one 3-0, as is the LSU A team. So, I mean, don't again, don't be disappointed if you're UNCC. We give them full credit for their efforts. They did a fantastic job considering the opposition.
But that's going to be it for this series. This is a collegiate star league, and make sure if you want to find if you want to find more good action like this, and uh, where where do you think they, they can find it, George? I, I think right here might actually right be a here. good spot. Every every Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, that's six Pacific. You can find this live right here on. Uh, oh man, I don't remember what the Twitch is off the top of my head. I want to say it's C Star League. It's C Star League. Yeah, it's C Star League. It's right here. Oh hey, they, they all know the Twitch squid. They're watching it. <laughs> We're oh, good. Yeah, I, suppose, I suppose that makes a certain degree of sense. <laughs> oh man, thank you everyone for stopping by. It was a great two series we had this evening, and I had a lot of fun. Of course, I think our viewers did as well. I should hope so, but that's going to be it for us. So, so for myself, Squid, and for my partner, Meet and Greek, we will see you all next Wednesday, this Wednesday.